What are we addressing, Richard? No, we're addressing Channing's hairline. It's almost time for a haircut there, champ. That's looking real scruffy there. Uh, hold on. Look, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. There it no, is. It's, there it is. Saying, no, no, no. The line is there. It's just not very crisp. No, it's no, not. It's not, it's not very. It's, it's not very. I didn't say it was crooky, crooked. I said it's not very crispy. It's not very crispy. No, it's not crispy this week. No, it's not crispy. Week. No. Yeah. A bit sleepy forehead, today. Is your forehead getting bigger, Channing? Yeah, I'm getting older, Richard. It oh, we have a little bit. We have a little bit of a recede. You getting a little no, Stephen hell A going? No. You get, you're getting a little bit of a Stephen A no. going. Low key, since you said it last time, I do the measurement. It's the same. <laughs> no, it's not. It's the it's angle. Not. This is a no, fish no, eye lens. Do you use a kid's school ruler to measure that, or do you get a tape measure out? I just go like this. I just go like, <laughs> go like this. Yeah, just keep going. It's, 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 and wait, yeah. listen. If it start to go like that, if it start to go oh back here, how how, how far do you cut it all? How far back? Like, let, let me be really honest. How far back? To go to you the low ski? Would you go? Would you? Would you go Stephen A? Would you go Stephen A? Would you no, go that far back? Absolutely how far back not. How far back would you go? It gotta be. Give me a line. Look Give me like a, the wrinkles. So like it gotta be like here, like, right it gotta there. Be bad. This is still square. This is an adult head. This is a child of four kids. This is a dad of four kids' head. This is stress. Okay. If it okay, goes well, past the three fingers, like Allie has three fingers before her hairline. So yeah, like in my yeah. defense, in my no, defense, two and a half. Well, you got no, big you got hands. Two and a half. Right? You got two and a half. You got two and a half. Yeah, yeah, they that's can't. It. You know what that means. Having said that, Richard, take a drink. Channing and I just addressed something with you, and you proceeded. I feel like to no, I didn't closer know. to the, the camera. I didn't know. No, no, no. I didn't know because I don't really watch the episodes. I think we do a we pretty good job of talking <laughs> and whatever, and we give it to the people and we let it go. Right? For some reason, I always thought I always thought that there would be some editing of maybe distancing me. I did not know I was going to be in the camera like this all the time. <laughs> so I, I watched because you sent the you sent the um, uh, the episode uh, talking about like the jokes, and then when I watched it, I was like, "God, my face as gorgeous as I look, I am all the way in the camera." And this is another thing I didn't know, and this is why I want to apologize to road trip and listeners. I always thought. Because I would watch our clips, I would watch our clips, or see our like our little clips. I thought that our podcast that we had the editing where if Channing was talking, it would go to like a one shot of Channing. So then I would go no. black. So then I would go black, <laughs> thinking I could like do whatever. Okay, Channing's talking now for whatever. I gotta do whatever. It just goes black on the screen. I guys, why didn't you guys tell me? No Richard, one told me. We because tell you all funny. the time. No, we tell no, see, Richard, asshole, dick. <laughs> it makes me so mad. I did uh, not. Richard, no, I did not know that. I did not. I knew it was people, going black. But. What do people say to you when you go when your screen goes black? What are they? What are they telling you? <laughs> no, no, no. It's not. I just know these are things that I noticed, and I was just like, oh, oh that, go read a, the comments. They'll let you know a, what they a, think. A, <laughs> I, first of all, do not read the comments. The, yeah, your opinion. Your opinion of me does not affect my day, so I will not. It's not my responsibility. I will not <laughs> yeah. put anyone else in a position to affect my day. I woke Unless up this I'm morning. Really bored and had a few chosen family. Rides, I only. I only absolutely. Enter, I only enter into those chats when I want to fuck up someone else's day. <laughs> yeah. If I'm having a good day. If I'm having a good day, I don't care about anything else. Can you Nothing. can you do me a favor? Can you be a good teammate and go enter into our Instagrams uh, chats today and defend everyone and fuck up their day about me not knowing who Ronald McDonald? Nope. No, 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 no. I already no, talked no, to no, your brother. No, no, he said no. we we give you up. I said the Fry delegation does not want Allie. No, but I got enough no, kids. I, I, well, you saw you saw my emotions and I'm you your saw your child. Well, well, you know. Technically, well, all, you I'm way is that it, all I'm saying is that we might have to have an, a, a conversation about the Ohio school system, right? We really like the like. My the dad listens school. to this, so be careful. I, no, I'm with you. As <laughs> oh, your father, as an Richard. educator, as an educator, might be the most disappointed. So Richard. we don't have to express anything, any comment. Ali's father is a president or is a principal. He's an educator of 49 years. And his daughter's like Ronald McDonald's a, a clown. Richard, I know he just sat there he's too, an and he's an educator of a homeschool. 
they don't have a school in Van Wert. It's yeah, literally do. the barn and the six people who live in town. He's a principal yeah. of a homeschool for 49 years. It's a running scam. Don't it's a running scam. Like that. Everyone in don't town pays up like with uh, eggs and hay and wheat. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, what about all those uniforms that Allie bought for her, for her high school? That, yeah, she's those over cheating. her cousins. Those were for her. That's cousins. two towns those over, and she those just are, did that as are. a publicity stunt. Those girls, did you see their face? You're like, who the fuck is this? That's aggressive, bro. My bad. Very aggressive. Jeez. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, uh, having said that, uh, Luka Dongich, it's back. <laughs> Luka Dongich is back in the building. Luka Look at him giggle. Oh, Dongich. <laughs> I thought it yeah. said Lich. Okay. Okay, well, you maybe need to, we need to first of all, Richard, out. I need to be saying these names. Don't take my glory. It's the one thing that I get to do on these episodes. First of all, I am the one that he's been, this is like the second time we felt comfortable saying what his name is because it was so yeah. offensive half the time. It's never offensive. Luca Dongich, Richard Jefferson, Allie Clifton. This is an episode of Road Trippin. We're actually waiting on a special guest, which you all have already It's not that special. We're waiting this. on a guest. He's pretty special. He's special. He's, he's, he's special. special. Yeah, you know what? Um, special is the right way to describe him. <laughs> in the most sincere form. Um, how about Channing? I know you did, Rich. Let's talk about this. Uh, Team USA. Mm. How about that win yesterday? What did you guys think? Channing, did you watch? No. You know what? I'm <laughs> sparse, parts. <laughs> I, uh... highlights, highlights on SportsCenter do not count as parts. They don't. No, no, no. I watch parts. I watch parts, but then it's me versus four other people in my house, and four of them are girls. Five of them are four of them are girls. <laughs> my... There's five words. other people in my house, and it's me who wants to watch Team USA basketball. They're like, is LeBron playing? No. Is Steph Curry playing? No. Is Draymond Green playing? No. Is this America speaking? No, and I was like, they're not playing. They go, we don't want to watch this. And I was like, damn, y'all. Hang on, time out. Are those their favorite players? Steph, Draymond, Braun? Yeah, so my kids were born, in, two of them were born in Phoenix. So they're like, where's the Devin Booker and KD and Bradley Beal? So they know those names. And then Aww. because we went to the finals, they know Steph, Clay, and Draymond. And then one, the last one was born in Cleveland. So she knows, uh, you know, where's Kevin playing? And I'm like, nope, Kevin plays on Miami. Oh, okay. So she's, you know, she's Aww. getting to learn the new cast play. But I'll tell you this. I like it. Anthony Edwards is obviously special. But, like, Austin Reeves has been impressive because of how he's getting more of a role. And he looks like, oh, shit, that's co-. like, it looks comfortable to him. You know, he makes good plays when he's around LeBron and AD, which for most part isn't that hard. Just don't do stupid shit. But when you're on a good all-star team like this, he just, his rhythm of the game makes things work really, really, really well. Yeah, no, I no, I think Anthony Edwards definitely has a chance to be super Ooh. special. Like, I think he has a chance. Like, I'm going to be really honest. I don't, talent-wise, and, and this is going to be crazy, I think he has... In this summer, I think he's in a position to pass up Ja, to pass up Zion. And and I know Zion, when Zion's on the court, Zion's that dude. There is no, like, let, let's not, that's the issue. When he's on the court, he's that dude. The question is, can he be on the court consistently? But I think when you start to think about the young dudes in this league, I I know Victor, we're going to see what he does in the next couple of years, but Anthony Edwards seems like that guy and it's so easy. He jumps so easy. He shoots it so easy. He has so much strength. His handle is easy. He's learning to be a two-way player. And he's in a position right now where I know you call it an all-star team. This is not this is not like what the cool thing about watching Germany and Spain is that they've got to move the ball like a college team. They've got to play like a college team, being a, a team of highly talented all-stars and NBA players. But I will say, oh fuck. I will say this, <laughs> Anthony Edwards, like the fact that all of these guys have quickly deferred to him as the alpha, right? They have all deferred to him as he's going to be that guy and they've all complimented each other. But that man, he's going to be an alpha for a long time. What's up? Man? Why, is of- wait, wait. why is shoulder so, why is shoulder so big? Damn, bro? look at Bob's shit. Why, 
What you doing, bro? That boy did the delts. He did all listen, shoulders. No listen, girls. Listen. He was right. doing knees. Little dudes. Why? Little dudes always want to do shoulders and shrugs. shoulder press. That's listen, all you did. No listen, arms. Listen. I, I had a lot of former teammates, including Richard, tell me that I was going to be fat when I retired. So I just kept it. <laughs> <laughs> I Speaking of my- that dude, welcome, Jameer Nelson. Thank you. Uh, thank you. How you doing, man? I can't complain. I don't, I don't know how you two deal with this dude, man. What do you mean? <laughs> you. What I do? What do you mean? What, you know don't, what? You do? <laughs> what don't you you're do? You're a like like, You're a troublemaker. So this yeah. is the thing. When Jameer is talking, he is talking to a mirror. So he knows that everything that's ever been said <laughs> about him, he can say directly to me. That is why our lockers <laughs> were next to each other in Dallas. And half the time, me being me, I'm always looking to my right, like, what did you just say? What's wrong with you, bro? That was me talking to Jameer in Dallas the whole time. Uh, Were you in Dallas, Richard? What? Weren't you shitty in Dallas? I was good. I was nice in Dallas. I was dunking on people and shit. It wasn't your best. It wasn't your best album. I'll say that. What are you talking about? First of all, my Dallas performance got me to Cleveland. So I did. knew that was coming. I you know what? You know what? You know what's crazy? We we had a we had a bunch of dudes on that team who had to accept a different role, including myself. I was like, man, I'm I'm like, I think I was averaging like five points. They tell me you're doing great. I'm like, I don't feel like it. And then no, uh, I just go in the locker room and talk shit with Richard. Because <laughs> <laughs> we were doing no. the same thing. <laughs> That's how I felt in Cleveland, but well, you know when you got the big fella, you're like, "Well, shit, we won. I'm rolling. We rolling with this." Oh, y'all need me tonight? Three shots. That's it. If we lose, that's y'all fault. Jameer, how are you? I'm doing good. How you how doing? Are you? I'm doing well. Good. What's what's going on in your world? Is it busy? Is it slow time right now? Um, you're obviously well, your uh, front office for those yeah. that are just tuning in and listening. Jameer Nelson, uh, assistant GM, still correct? No, with so the- I'm. I'm um, I'm elevating a little bit, still working on some things, but I'm 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 moving up a little bit. He's the assistant to the assistant of the assistant. <laughs> hey, that's hey, look, you just take I I, I moved up one because last year I was the assistant to the assistant times like five. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. All right. Wait, what made you want to get into that side? Um Naturally, you, you, you guys know as like former players, everybody's like, oh, you'll be a great coach, especially from the point guard lens. I, I just wanted to like learn this side and, and see what it was about initially. And then I started becoming more and more intrigued. And then, you know, one thing led to another in big meetings, trade calls and, you know, talking to agents. I'm starting to love it. Um, well, I started loving it um, back then. And now it's just like it's, it's something that I'm enjoying especially when you have a good group of guys around you and girls, um, they, they help out a lot. I mean, my, my learning curve is has shot through the roof just because of the exposure that I've gotten over the last few years. What, what has been the thing that you have, you know, even for all of us, like what, the three, me and Channing and Allie, we're broadcasters, we're in that space. It's been a lot of things that surprise us when you get over to this side. It's like you're talking basketball, but there's a business side of it that is a little bit more prevalent. Um, what has been something that's been surprising to you? Maybe that you didn't know and maybe something that you felt would have been useful to know as a player about the position that you are now in. Well, it's, it's, it's funny because I, I mean, I was traded quite a bit. I um, know. Lots. Lots. Yeah. Lots. Fucking um, anything. Oh, yeah. I was happy when you got traded from Dallas. That's true. Thank God. Get Rondo in here. We need help. <laughs> just, just the one thing is like, and it happened when I actually got traded from Dallas. The league is not personal. You know, it's, it's you, you really get to see the business side of it. You you have to start thinking like um, uh, front office exec and not the former player because you like, you know, you, you, you're in the meetings, you're talking about guys. I probably was traded 35 times a year and it never, just never went through. You know, mm. it's stuff like that. Oh, like wow. you, you don't know um, as a player what you know on this side. It's just for me – it's eye opening to the, the conversations that are had and um, how we communicate is, is totally different from player to player. Um, but it's fun. It's, it's, it's for me like having a, a team that I'm involved with and being a part of something that's bigger than myself, trying to win a championship, um, which I didn't get to do as a player. So it's, it's just a matter of like 
grinding and, and challenging myself and in, 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 in a different lens. I always, I, I did like, just like everybody else, I thought I would be a coach. I'm not ruling that out, um, but I am enjoying what I'm doing right now. So um, looking forward to running my own team one day. Is your fun part, is it more the NBA players and those type of trades are like free agents or is it more like assessing talent from college players? And I have a second question to all that. Yeah, so it's funny, like it's hard, like it's hard as a former player to not get to your conclusion quick because you're looking at the dude you're like yo you're like yo he can't play or she can't play whatever right just quick right but so the, the the one thing i learned and it was it happened you know one of my my former co-workers he said look you you're spot on with your assessment but you need to not get to the conclusion so quick you need to find out why they can play and why they can't play so you have to break the player down and explain it in a room full of people uh on both ends even even if i'm like okay i just want to stir something up I might I might go against the group just because because it makes everybody think different. You know, I think that's part of like being a performer, a former athlete or former NBA player. I see things different, you know, sometimes. And, and um, the, the learning part of it is, is just learning what everybody else has. And I have something that people that they can't get. I have 14 years of being in that locker room. So I, I think just and Richard knows I, I like to stir things up a little bit. So I, I don't mind it. Third things up. What was your second question, Channing? Well, that was just it. And I think nowadays you said stuff isn't personal, right? So I think on that side, when guys are getting these huge contracts, do you see the contracts getting bigger? And like, how should like, if you had to give advice to guys playing now, other than it not being personal, like what other things could you help them do to really just like go hoop and not worry about that other part? Yeah, I mean, you said it. Like, I, yeah. for for me, I look at it like this: I'm I'm five five eleven from five, Chester. Five. Wait, 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 wait. I'm five wait, eleven, bro. Wait, listen, my my city we is barely forty thousand people. I, I looked at it like I made it to the league. Whatever I do after this is an incentive. Like, and most most of the league comes from the inner city, right? So you get there. And, and, and I think the main thing for me when I got there was like, how do I stay? Um, you're going to get the money. Like you might get 10 million, you might get 15, Ali might get 30, 50, whatever. Right. But it's, it's going to be some money. <laughs> it's going to be some money that we've never seen. So the money is going to be there as long as you take care of what you can control. And, and that's, that's you being the best version of yourself, like every single day in practice, every game. Like I tell these young guys, especially in the G league, you may not, you may not make it to the league, but if you do, you're probably going to be the last man on the roster. What are you going to do to separate yourself from, you know, that that next guy come in and take your spot? Was it a challenge for you to separate having been a player for so long in this league to now being on the other side, but still leaning into those strengths of why you probably relate to so many guys in the locker room and still being kind of recently removed from the game as a player? It's tough. I'm I'm always going to be I'm always going to be a critic. I'm looking at my team and other teams, like, I, I just don't understand why you do this or why you can't make oh. this skip pass or why you don't make this pocket pass. <laughs> I, 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 oh, and haterism comes quick. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's I have oh, a head haterism. It, comes. <laughs> it feels good. It's, it's natural. It's natural. It's natural when you play it at the highest level to be able to do that. And I think we, we've all earned that respect to be able to like critique the game that way. That's why you guys are. You know, well, well, Channing, you're good on TV, and Al, you're, yeah. you're I, you know, <laughs> like you guys are on TV. You know, are you not- surprised that Richard is in the television space? No. Still, no. after not five years, still, 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 <laughs> still, he has not got I'm, fired yet. I'm surprised he's still, but I didn't. I'm not surprised that he chose that route. You know, <laughs> I, he's obviously he has a lot of knowledge of the game, and the one thing about Richard was he's he was never afraid to voice his opinion. No. <laughs> Like right or wrong, like he he voices his opinion, and it's funny. I'll text him every now and then when he's on TV, just to like you know mess with uh, him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that, but I will say this: certain people get texts like insider information. I get texts of people heckling me, talking, <laughs> yeah. shit, saying you don't believe that you track, and it's like people that I know, people that have their phone number, and they just want to like they want to harass me. He this dude harasses me on television, and then. I get my get back. 
I will get my get back. Well, That's see, the this best is, part. This is, this is my get back. When you're on TV, this is all the stuff you put me through, all the times you tormented me in that locker room, calling me all the different names. I'm not going to say the names. I, was, I, I don't want to get, the, I don't get you canceled. I, I, I am the best <laughs> gift. I am the best gift that you had. The fact that your locker was next to mine. The best part about me and Jameer is that we were both a part of the end of each other's career. Um, is because I go to Denver. I go to Denver. Oh, yeah. And Jameer was there. Coach um, uh, Coach Malone. Malone was going to play Jameer Nelson instead of Moutier and had Jamal Murray as the backup. And they're like, Moutier, they're like, well, we can't trade Moutier who is a top 10 pick if we don't play him. So, like, we got to be able to trade him. And then he got money balled. And he's like, well, you can't play Jameer because we just traded him, and Richard Jefferson is now your veteran. <laughs> yeah. the but that was pretty much the end of both of our careers. It's fun. That that, that story right there is so true. I I, I never forget. Um, and, it, and like I said, it wasn't personal. I, 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 I talked to the team. I'm like, hey, are you guys waving me? They're like, no, no, no. Why you hear that? Of course you hear it, right? So. 20 minutes later, yeah, we're going to have to wave you. So I said, well, <laughs> so I was like, all right, cool. And I was in a movie theater. I was like, cool. Uh, my money travels with me, right? It was like, yeah. I was like, all right, don't worry about it. And I just <laughs> went back to my apartment. Because at that point, like Richard said, I was at the end of my career. And I was like, you know, it is what it is. I understood, like, <laughs> it's funny. I, I don't know if um, if I should have done this, but I took some young guy spots later in my career. And I think it hurt me a little bit because people were afraid to put me on their team. Cause I was still, you know, mm -hmm. capable of playing. Mm -hmm. That's true. I think you were a very strong backup. You transitioned from that role as a starter, all-star into like a, a, a six man into a great veteran backup, which, you know, teams are still looking for that today. That's yeah. a coveted spot. Like when you start ranking spots, uh, the backup point guard is big. And yeah, it was true. That was the issue in Denver. You got pushed out of Denver because it was Moutier and Jamal Murray and they had to play one. They had to start one. They had to trade one. They had to figure it out. And having you there as a coach, the coach wants the veteran. The team wants, you know, the team wants wants to see what the assets are to see what they can put together. Right. And so that's where you get. And it, but look, that puts you in a tough spot. And then it puts me who's coming in in a tough spot. Right. It puts me in a tough spot because now it's like coach mad that his veteran point guard is gone. <laughs> and it's like, who's this guy? You know, so a lot of times, man, like you can get put in spots that are not because of your performance and be put in spots, not because of. of the, the team situation. You're just kind of floating along and you just try and make the best of it. I, I had dudes calling me from that team saying they were like, oh man, we're not going to talk to Richard <laughs> because like, you know, now you're the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hot. Like, and I was like, I was like, yo man, like he didn't, he didn't like wave me. You know what I mean? He didn't do it. You know what I'm I would have. I would have if no, I did, but I, I didn't. No, you wouldn't. No. But I, you know what though? I'm glad we're recording this because it's the first time you ever gave me a compliment. So when? What a compliment did, did I say? You didn't even you know told you me did. I was I transitioned transition well. No, 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 no. That was because your skills had declined. And so you wow. <laughs> I was about to say, Richard doesn't even know he gave you the compliment. I got a this is a random question, but I am curious. Like your your hey, I'm not yeah, I guess I could say heyday. Your peak, right, was those years where Orlando was dominating. Yeah. Right to me, where you you I honestly we considered you the like a two guard, almost more than a point guard, right? Even though you were the point guard, mm -hmm. like depending on the team, he do would play point guard, yep, right? Yep. If that was the right matchup, right? Which was new for everyone in rotations. And you had that monster rolling towards the rim. Who was somebody from that age, the early 2000s, you know, like that was nice that you don't think gets enough credit for like how good he was? I always like asking these kind of guys these questions from 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 my team or just in general in general like somebody you were like how is this dude not getting more attention man i think a dude like gerald wallace like who forgot about the him. dude yeah. the dude like Didn't even right, like, right, shoes. right yeah right right now in this day and age he can still be effective because of his athleticism his size and it's his skill, motor his, his motor, motor. So like it's, it's a skill now to play hard. So he'll be able to navigate just because of that. But he was just so tough, man. Like, you, you could put him in versus any matchup, three, four, five. He was going to 
run right through your chest. He was going to guard the hell out of you. Um, but like dudes like that, they don't get enough credit. Like you, you always hear about the, the big names and, but those are the guys that, that lead Charlotte to the playoffs when they probably shouldn't make it, you know? Mm-hmm. Him, uh, one guy, not to Gerald Wallace. Him. Gerald Wallace got kid Gilchrist drafted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was a lot of really, good, you know, uh, 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 shaky draft picks there. But uh, <laughs> this really, is true. But, Ali, look, it's look, true. Gerald Wallace, this motor, this hustle. Just we like need them. to get one of those. <laughs> now nah, that ain't it. Listen, <laughs> it's like, yo, you trying to get the, you know uh, the Draculos and you you got the vampire chocolates you know on the bottom you know of the what's bag. Crazy is Jameer probably would have had the same assessment. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he, even a dude like like Mo Williams, man. Like the dude oh. was, oh, Mo is nice. Mo, Mo. Mo, Mo, was Mo is one of the, I played with him in Orlando, him. and when I tell you that kid, I was just like, if I saw him work out, I'd be like, oh, what? This kid could fuck. It's, it was ridiculous what yeah. he could do. But the problem is when you have all those young guys, we had Victor, Tobias, Vooch, Evan Fournier. You had Dwayne Demet. You had all these dudes under 24 years old, Aaron Gordon, who like wanted to be the man. And Mo Williams is also there, like, where do I fit in? But if he had gone to a veteran team, it would have been his career would have been completely different. Completely You might different. be talking talking about Mo Harkless. Yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry, Mo Harkless. My bad. You're talking <laughs> yeah, about yeah, Mo I was Williams. Say, we were... <laughs> I'm thinking like I'm like, damn, Mo Williams is my age. He might be maybe a year <laughs> younger or older. My bad. I'm thinking Mo he Harkless. Young. I'm thinking he wasn't young when you were in Orlando. <laughs> Listen, his allergies. I didn't hear that. This guy got whacked. Mo Williams was nice, though. You want to ask me, you want to ask them how they deal with me? We want to ask them how he deal with me. He went on a five-minute rant about the wrong player. You should Allie just ask know. Allie, Allie how know. she deals with both of them. Allie didn't know. 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 Allie didn't know that Ronald McDonald was a clown. Okay, it, it, let's let's continue on. <laughs> Calling all road trippers. We all know the problem with fads. They come and go. So when it comes to weight management plans, you need a long-term solution, and that's Noom. For some people, eating is an emotional experience. So when it comes to managing your weight, it makes sense that Noom has taken a psychology-based approach. This helps you to better build habits and behaviors that are easier to maintain. Using both science and personalization, Noom helps you manage your weight for the long term. The best part is you decide how Noom fits into your life, not the other way around. Based on a sample of almost 5,000 Noomers, 98% said Noom helped to change their habits and behaviors for good. Noom's personalized courses are easy to follow and will help grow your confidence with tools you can put into practice on day one. The bottom line is, road trippers, Noom's changing how the world thinks about weight loss. So sign up for your free trial today at Noom.com. Again, head to N-O-O-M.com and sign up for your free trial today. This episode of Road Tripping is brought to you by our friends at BetterHelp. Sometimes in life, we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. Whether you're dealing with hard decisions around your career, relationships, or anything else, therapy can help you stay connected to what you really want as you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Rich Channing and myself have all faced some pretty tough challenges over the years, both in our personal lives and professionally. And I promise you, we wouldn't be where we are today without a great support system in place. If you're thinking of getting that support you need through the form of therapy, then give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online and it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You'll start by filling out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So road trippers, let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash road tripping today and get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash road tripping. Jameer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do you have a favorite Sam Van Gundy story? Um, From your time? Man, there? there's so many. Uh, it's just, one, he was the best coach that ever coached me, you know, taught me the game mess he messed me up because I I, I every coach after I kind of like second guessed everything they said because he had me so prepared but it would just wow. be times we were we, we would be down four to two in the beginning of the game and he would call a timeout and curse us out and I'm like yo man we down by two points with like 46 <laughs> minutes left he's like I don't <laughs> he's like I don't give a f-. they're kicking your ass I'm like they're up by two the, the the funniest story, the funniest story I think was we were playing New Jersey and they had um, Darren Williams, 
and we were up by 30. They weren't good. We were up by 30. D will come down. He hit three threes, bang, bang, bang. So Stan took me out and he's like yelling at me. So I yelled back, you know, Richard knows I don't, I don't, I don't care. I don't, I don't bite my tongue. So I'm yelling back. So I'm like, so I just like, yo, that's, that's my fault. Huh? And I'm like, you know, he's like, nah, it's not your fault. He's just kicking your so, <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, so he said that to me. I'm like, man, f you like that, right? We we're going back and forth. I go back in the locker room, cool off, and come back. He's like, you ready to play? And I'm like, I'm like, man, whatever, just put me in the game. And we ended up winning, but it was just so funny. Like he he was a real dude. Like if somebody was kicking your, ass, he's gonna tell you. Yeah, that's the best. That's the I best part is if the accountability is not always X's and O's. It's not always X's and O's. It's like, no, nah, but he's whooping your ass. Yeah. It's not like just I call a timeout. My other sub is to take you out. And then you haven't, like, Jameer, Jameer had, and I'll give this to you. This wasn't a con, this is not a compliment. This is an observation. He had a, he, he was very similar to me in the sense that he would, like, often talk back. I would say a little smart, like, smart. I say, he would say things. That were like, oh, so that's my fault. And it's like, it's more conversational, right? And you build a relationship with people so you can have those conversations in those heated moments. So then at halftime, he's like, you ready to play? And it's like, motherfucker hit three threes. He's a fucking all NBA player. And he came down, his team sucks. We're up by third and he's firing off threes. But he also has a relationship where he can take you out of the game, make an example out of you. And know that you're not going to take it personally or that you guys can talk it out. So what that does is that keeps an edge on you. That keeps an edge on your team the whole time. Yeah. And until you get an, become an older player or until you're on the other side, you look back on it. And that's how you learn lessons of how to motivate. Team. Pop would do the same thing. Pop would call timeouts 12 seconds in. I've told this story before. Channing one time called me and said, how are you doing not starting? And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, I turned it on like right after the jump ball and you weren't like, I turned it on at the beginning of the game. I was like, oh, I missed the rotation the second play of the game and Pop took me out. <laughs> Yo, seriously. Cuss me, cut, no, was no lie. He, I was like, what are you, how are you handling not starting? I'm like, bro, I'm start, I've started every game. He's like, dude, I turned on the Portland game and you weren't starting. And I was like, uh, I missed the box out. And Hang on, when Pop was this? When you this were in San Antonio? When I was in San Antonio. And you Pop started definitely in San Antonio? wasn't his best album, I'll tell yeah. you that. Throw that album in the track. Hang on. Tio, you started in San Antonio. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The whole time I was there. Uh, uh, I, I didn't start for like 15 games. Yeah. We won you 16. act like that place hated you. Like they, they do. They never played a me. minute. I, I, we we swept their ass out the playoffs. <laughs> That's <laughs> what the <laughs> moved on by Amari. <laughs> Boom. That wasn't even Boom. during the playoffs. <laughs> you make that, that noise. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> like. <laughs> Anyways, we won sixty-one games there. We were still got swept one. by the by the tenth place Suns uh, again. That was not that year. We beat <laughs> Dallas and then lost to you guys in the second round. Then the yeah. year after that, we were in the first. We we won sixty-one games and then played shitty versus Memphis and they knocked us out. They yeah. hate me there. They hate me there. I oh, wonder why. Listen, listen. See, you're that's a, what I'm saying. A great I'm like person, but. Yeah, he probably was talking back to Pop and like. Oh, <laughs> oh no, no, you don't talk no. back to Pop. No, you, you don't can't talk. talk Richard back to was Pop. subdued. He was like, they gave him tranquilizers. <laughs> he was like, where do I run? <laughs> right. it, it, was, it was. But in my defense, going back, there were players over the course of NBA that have now gone to San Antonio and struggled when they came there from other situations, whether it's yeah. Marcus Aldridge, DeMar DeRozan looked like he was the best player in fucking basketball. Once he left and went to Chicago, putting up buckets, you know, Kawhi obviously has been injured, but you've also seen it. it look, it can, Kawhi was different, but I think it can be tough if you're a veteran and then you go there into that system and you're trying to adjust. That's a very, like LaMarcus, like I said, LaMarcus did not look like the same LaMarcus. He was still an all-star, still very good, but he didn't look like the LaMarcus that was in Portland. Same with DeMar DeRozan. DeMar DeRozan nice did not look San like San Antonio. Yeah, like, but they were never content. But I'm saying, think about it. Oh, contenders. You have DeMar, yeah, yeah. He's not and they Duncan, were never in the conference why. finals. They had, but I'm saying, though, like, San Antonio never got to that space with those two dudes. And True. those two dudes did not look as dominant as they were prior. And Lamar, are, and DeMar looks more dominant post. So it was pre- and post. DeMar looks like he's the most dominant person. He, he just struggled. And he talked about it. You know, Jameer, what's, what's your? I, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't think I ever won a game in San Antonio. Well, wow. the, well, judging from some of the wow. teams that you played on, I, I don't see that to be. That <laughs> <ridiculous>. <laughs> 
I, I okay, can't wait, remember. This is, I can't remember. Yeah, so, well, you only played there your first how many years with Orlando? So you'd only have gone one, once a yeah, season. Once, yeah, so I think they beat us 10 times. I can see that. I can see that. I can see that. Wow. Wait, wait, wait. When Dwight did the tap in over Tim Duncan to that win was the in, game. Yeah, in, that was in Orlando. Oh, shit. Yeah, I, I yeah. beat him. But we didn't, we didn't, I don't think we beat him. And it's going to, you know what it is? I got, I got all the Spurs, I got all the Spurs jerseys in my, in my I got you. We talk about this play. I was going to put Richards up there, but they, they said they lost it in the mail. Yeah. Lost it in the now, mail. You I, go to I, the I, Cracker I, I, Barrel and go listen, get it. It's two for one with your older flapjacks. If you put my, if you put my jersey up there with those, bro, it will devalue your house. Right. You have been, you have now become a slum lord. I was just gonna say, wait, you're gonna get a uh, San Antonio jersey signed by Richard in the mail Ooh, next week. Yeah. You're welcome. Great idea, Jameer. Yeah. What is your assessment evaluation from like a talent on uh, Victor Wembanyama? I mean, it's just crazy that just the fluidity fluidity that he has as you know I don't know what seven four seven five like I, I you know the closest Alien thing in time. terms of that we see like what KD that moves that fluid that tall and that long um I, you know obviously he has some some growing to do just knowing the ins and outs of the NBA game and the physicality that's that's gonna be a question mark for him but for the most part man like the talent level is I don't know if we've seen a uh uh do this close in terms of talent since LeBron. I mean, people could talk about Zion and all these other guys, like, but this is this is seven foot three with a handle, jump shot. Def- he defends the rim well. Um, you know, obviously he's going to have some some a lot of buzz around him throughout the first couple of years of his career for sure, just to see if he pans out. Which I I don't see a reason why he doesn't. I think like this day and age, if you can shoot the ball, I think you'll figure things out. Okay, question. Oh. This, this, this is a big statement. Let me statement now. Because you, you've seen a lot. 19-year-old Dwight or 19-year-old Victor? Oof. Is this in today's Ooh. game? Ooh. I, yeah. you know, I'm just saying, bro. I look, you can say today's game or whatever. Uh, Shaq is on the board. If Shaq is on the board, you taking big fella, bro. In today's yeah. game, if Tim Duncan's on the board, you taking big fella. So I all I'm merely that. saying is Dwight... People do not realize what Dwight is. He is one of the most spe- – forget basketball players. He is one of the most physically gifted humans that have ever walked the face Disgusting. of the fucking planet. When I think of David and Goliath and they were like, they were giants, I think of Dwight Howard walking through the fucking desert. You don't think of me? You and facing Jameer <laughs> and facing Jameer. And they're like, he's a giant. Damn. Who is this man? Like Listen, Dwight Howard. Come on. I, I don't – I don't. this is the thing. I don't like comparing errors. But I'm I can say gonna, this players I, I don't i don't understand why dwight and how he's not a top 75 player all the time if that's, oh, that's i was it. gonna we, add that we, we've done that yeah. we've done that. come yeah. on we, yeah no, but he, but when we, we were in orlando together he was he was he was arguably number one or number two in terms of face of the league uh for a while for a couple yeah. years like defensive player of the year you can name all the accolades and you know for us as a team we were always top one or two in the league so and, and that was a big part of it was because of him like knowing as a point guard, I'm gonna get open shots because this dude's gonna get double teamed every single play. Every play, he got double pick teamed. and roll, pick and roll. The whole the defense worst. is pulled in. It didn't I, I don't know. So answer I, I, my answer my damn question. I'm taking Dwight. I'm, take, I'm taking Dwight. I'm taking Dwight. Okay, that, that's I want to win that's right now. You take Dwight. If you got some years to get some some meat on his legs, pause. But this is this is the thing. No, but this is the you thing can, with Victor. You take Victor. With, with Victor, you hope the Vic, Victor continues to develop. With Dwight, I'm not saying he was a finished product at 19, but damn, what you were getting at 19 was something. Yeah. It was Amari, but bigger and yeah. stronger. Like that's and, like like Amari yeah. had more stuff. Amari had more skill, but like you're like a physical specimen. We hadn't seen Amari till Dwight came, and we were like, geez. Damn. So you would say. Number one pick, 19 Dwight, 19 Victor, you're taking Dwight Howard. Yeah, and the dude ate Popeyes all day and <laughs> he buns and Pepsis and stuff. Like the dude at one point wasn't eating fruit. He wouldn't eat salad, no vegetables, no, like nothing. He was eating He's a specimen. He was that like to me, it was like this dude is special because of everything. Not just like you said, not the basketball part, like how he recovered and 
it, it just was crazy. Like the dude yeah, he was, never missed games. He never missed never, games. His first games, like seven, he never, eight he never years. missed practice. He never missed yeah. practice. We would tell him yeah. to take practice off. He would never miss a practice and yeah. play every. He wouldn't let the backups get in practice. Yeah. Oh wow. shit, that's fucked up. Gortat was over there hot, wasn't he? <laughs> no, Gortat was the backup. Gortat was the backup playing against him, getting elbowed every day. Dude, every day. Hey, Every day. Gortat, man, listen, you made a good point. We in Phoenix, we got all the old Orlando guys. So we got Turgaloo, we got Vince, we had Q Rich, we had uh we had uh Petrus. Oh, forgot his other name. Petrus. Michael um, Petrus. Michael Petrus. 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 There we go. He yeah. wasn't our Not, favorite. Did you have, he more, did like, you have Mo Harkless and Mo Williams? No, no, <laughs> bitch. Shut up. <laughs> but like all they could do was say, Man, this is not what Stan did. And we're like of course not, motherfucker. You're here in Phoenix. Like, we <laughs> just went to the Western Conference Finals. Like, we tried to go back. Stan would never let us do this. We're like, well, we ain't Stan. You got freaking Alvin Gentry, homie, so calm down. But it's the opposite <laughs> of Stan. Opposite I had, of Stan. It's funny. I had, it's the total opposite. I had Alvin my last year um, oh. in New Orleans. And nice. he. Nice. Yeah, no. Look, so <laughs> he, he, we, I was like the backup. We had a bunch of guards with our plan. And then he gave me like a DMP. I was like, cool with it, whatever, into my career. So I had a couple DMP straight. And then we were up by like 25 and he put me in the game. I was like, all right, whatever. Go oh, I know. I could already continue, but I'm, yeah. I'm already, I'm already. See, so so we, start, we started losing the lead, right? He put me out there with like two two way players, a couple of dudes that don't really play, right? So we start losing the lead. He got to put the starters back in, they come back and win. So I went to his office the next day. I said, Coach, um, I don't mind not playing. I'm going to work my tail off and be there for you. But, like, can you, like, not put me in that situation again? He's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Next game, he did the same thing. He's like, hey. Um, he was like, hey, Jameer, go get such and such. I was like, hell no. <laughs> he looked at me like, what? I was like, I'm not going in the game. <laughs> he was like, he was like, why not? I was just I just turned my back. I just literally like turned like I'm not going to the game. <laughs> this is who I was sitting next to. This is who my locker was next to. <laughs> Hang on. So wait, wh why did he do that? I don't know. Just don't be thinking. Coaches be getting in zones. He Coaches forgot. Be he in forgot. Zones. Okay, so he just forgot about the conversation. Yeah, I, I think he okay. just forgot because I, I was a good dude. Like I I respect the hell out of him. Like I, I thought he was a good coach. I thought he managed the team well. He just forgot. Like I and I, it was like two days later, and I was just thinking, like I just told this dude, I'm not going <laughs> in a situation like this. I'd rather go home to my kids and just not play. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah, because they don't understand. Oh, like you, amazing. as a player, you can be okay with a DMP as long as there's communication. What right. you're not okay with is being put into a bad position, and now your performance, your mental, how you like to prepare, that goes into it. Because like sometimes you might coach, you might need me. If you over here fucking with me in and out, we get two injuries, a sprained ankle, and something happens. Now all of a sudden you looking at me like you need me, but you haven't put me in a position. I got now it's my job to stay working and stay ready, but you're not putting me in a position to succeed. It's like I'm not gonna keep going out there and getting fucked up and got I'm a negative five hundred and I'm trying to get a job next year because you keep putting me out there with G Leaguers and the next thing you know, the coach is like, I try and give Jameer a chance to play. <laughs> Do you? Do no. you really? Right. Dude, flow is a lot, Ali. Like flow, like for vets, if you usually stay, remember I used to stay after, shoot around, you get your workout in, your flow is good. When you, like, let's say for me, I'm a shooter, right? So I need, I don't dribble at all. So I need people to like move around so that I could get open to shoot. If you put me with guys that just dribble the shit out of ball, I'm standing there. <laughs> They're like, what the fuck is Channing doing? And you get and pissed. Like a bum, right? Because he's not rebounding. He's not, not playing defense. I'm on the three-point line. His shots. No. He's not He's not posting up. So if somebody no. moving around and getting him shots, he is about as useful as an asshole. You put me here. with all-star, I look great. You put me with guys who are just <laughs> pat, 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 hitting behind the back doing workouts. I'm just like, man, I'm just out here running lines. I look like <laughs> and on the other end, you put me in every screen and roll. I'm unenthusiastic about playing defense. So I'm going to fuck that up. So then you're going to get me. I'm bad. I'm mad. You can't fuck up the vets. If you, you got to say, hey, we're going to put you in with vets, right? And this is a true story on Cleveland, right? That second unit, we were playing okay, but Kyrie was the, the main point guard of that second unit. That worked for the regular season. All of a sudden, the end of the season, we were like, 
Kyrie started getting into his bag, and we said, uh-oh, because all of us started to stand there. Man, coach made a switch and put Braun with the second unit. We are cooking, motherfuckers, and Kyrie was yeah. cooking at the end of the first quarter because he was playing with All-Stars, so he had all that room. But, like, putting the vets and guys that come off the bench with the right players is, like, huge for flow and feel of the game, confidence. Like, it yeah. is a lot. Yeah. It is a lot. It's yeah. more than what people think. That's what I was going to say, yeah. Jameer, do you remember me going crazy the start of my Dallas stretch? Oh, I was going to say when you were born. Greg Kopp. When I was what? <laughs> when you were born. That's crazy in a good way? I, I remember no. this. No, he, he probably went crazy, went off. Him, Yeah, it's, it was easy to go off in Dallas. That's all I was. I remember this. I think like two weeks before I got traded, um, I call a play. I'm bringing it up to court. I'm calling a play. And at the time, we had, i never forget, we had like, the, the number one rated offense in NBA history, like the yeah. games. So I call a play, and my job was just to get Dirk and Monte the ball and get the hell out the way, basically, right? And call a play. That's not the play Carlisle wanted. So he stomped his foot. <laughs> so I call timeout. Yo, don't you ever stomp your foot at me. <laughs> <laughs> it was real subtle. Though. It was real subtle. I don't think nobody heard me. He was like, I, I, I didn't mean it. Like I said, don't, don't, don't stomp your foot at me. And two weeks later, I was traded. <laughs> well, so I, well they stomp they your wanted, ass up out of here, man. They, 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 wanted, they wanted to bring in someone that could follow orders and instructions better, so they brought in Rondo. And let me just say this. Rondo was still talented. Obviously, Rondo went on to win a championship with the Lakers a few years later and blah, blah, blah. But the pairing of him and Rick Carlisle to, to say – that it was, it, it was, it was, it, it was just not, it could have been a better pairing. I'm going to keep it perfect, politically <laughs> correct. It could have been a better pairing, but we did lose the best offense. They made a bunch of trades to bring in Rondo. We did have at the time the best offense, the rating that they had seen, you know, that was on, on the skit when offenses were starting to boom even more. And with Dirk and Tyson, and it was just the wings. We had, you know, we had Chandler, we had yeah. Jay Crowder, uh, 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 Farouk Aminu. We had so like we just had a, a lot of depth in that space, and then we made that trade. And next thing you know, you called a timeout because he was stomping your feet, but he started getting eight second violations on purpose. <laughs> yeah, fucking oh against God. Rick. Oh, it was crazy. Him and Rick, that shit was. I I thought I had seen a lot with you sitting next to me. Well, his locker was right next to mine. <laughs> they got your ass up out of there, and then I'd really seen it all. <laughs> Uh, Jameer, you are a man of, uh, many hats. You wear many hats, one of which your dad, and I believe your son, uh, will now be at TCU. Yeah. He's at TCU. Oh, you mentioned you early. 12, huh? Yeah, man. Come yeah. get this barbecue chicken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how, um, are you, what kind of dad parent are you at games? Are you uh, allowed? Are you quiet? No, are you... you, you won't even know I'm there. Like, even like when he's training. Like that's his, this is his career. I, I just provide the resources. Mm -hmm. I don't go to the workouts. I don't do anything. Like I watch the games and like, if he asks me questions for the most part, I'll say something or give him what my thoughts. My only thing is like, just play hard, play hard. And like, don't have yeah. a ton of turnovers. Even when my, my girls play softball is like, go, go do your thing. Like, you know, we, we, we'll figure out how to get you trained and get you better at it. But like, at the end of the day, I'm not like, Oh, you got to do this. You got to do that. Cause it's his career. It's their careers, you know? Yeah. I, I like to listen to so these you don't with care. their young so ones. you don't care. You don't care. I care. You care. That's what I, I, I hear. That you is don't the opposite care. of us. You don't you know. Don't. People yell at, like, people are, like, chanting. And I was like, I mean, that was a foul. Motherfucker fouling. <laughs> I'm like, don't yell at the ref. He making $25 all day today. Leave that man alone. I don't I don't, yell, got I don't, I see I don't I, I, I'm in the space where I'm, so, like, it's six, eight. My kids are six and eight. My six-year-old plays up with the eight-year-old at times, and my eight-year-old never passes the ball. He never passes the ball. I and mean, you can make the jokes, but I didn't. That wasn't my game. That wasn't my game. I was extremely efficient. He never passed the ball. So I'm typically quiet and hiding because if there's 25 shots taken, my son will take 23 of them. So, like, I, I stay back and just kind of laugh. I'm like, you can't, J Jameer, you can't teach that. 
right? You can't teach that. He's dribbling. He's getting open and firing. I'm like, one day he's going to start making them. And then all of a sudden, instead of being two for 22, he's going to be 10 Four for 22. Four for 22 like, like his daddy. <laughs> Dude, <it's> like, <laughs> that's fine. At some point in time, he's going to make 10 of them. He's going to be 10 for 22 for five, for 30 points. And I'm be like, okay. As a, as a kid, I always said this, man. Like, you should shoot every shot. Look at it. Like, think about where we were when we were 10 or 12. We we're shot in the, the park. Ball. And we're yeah. in the park shooting it every time. Yeah, we're shooting it every time. And and that's kind of, to me, it's like, you can, you can figure out the rest of the stuff. You can figure out how to pass and rebound and all mm-hmm. that. But when we get you on that court, you, you put that ball in the hole, they're going to find a spot for you. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you're just yeah. consistently aggressive, right? And that's also yeah. like, of this thing. If you're two for 22, you must got a hard head because 0 for 4 feels like 0 for 20. <laughs> 1 for 10 must feel crazy, but he don't give a shit. So he don't get it. Shooter, but shooters think differently. Shooters think differently. Shooters don't know how many shots they've made. They don't know how many shots they've taken. They are focused on the next shot. They're not in there, oh, I'm, I'm eight. You know, you might check out the box board, but in the heat of the moment, the motherfuckers is just firing. Wait, away. are you speaking as a shooter? Because you are. No, 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 I'm not. <laughs> saying, I no, knew how many shots I had, motherfucker. I'm not going <laughs> to. Okay, let me rephrase this. Let me like, rephrase this. One for five? I got True one more scores. left. <laughs> True scores. Now, now, say oh, yeah, I wasn't no, a scorer, no, bitch. Not, say I wasn't a scorer, bitch. <laughs> you got fouled uh, a lot because uh, you were in there like a miniature Corey yes, McGinnis. Yes, because I had the physical <laughs> ability to take that shit. When they say nine free throws a night, that means you're getting the shit beat out of you for 82 games. I know. That's what it Costco, says. Costco brand Corey McGetty. That's what you are. Or a big yeah, ass yeah, Corey Brewer. Your girls, <laughs> I want to give your girls some love. How old are they? And so where are they my, playing my, softball? My older daughter just we just moved during last week, uh University of South Florida. Oh wow. Nice. Yeah. My, I have another daughter or two other daughters, fifteen, who will be a sophomore in high school and um my other daughter's eleven be sixth grade. Yo, how many okay. kids you got, bro? And why are they so old? <laughs> like, I got I got a kid that just finished his PhD. Yet my oldest kid just got on AARP, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. so okay, wait. So, so you are gonna bro? have two older kids playing college sports? I got two kids playing college sports. Yep. And then Good my, my 15 year old, this is her year to be recruited uh for college too. So how so you, next year. Next year Arizona. She'll be able to is she nice? If she's nice, you, go to Arizona. Like, what is the difference, like, for your kids, obviously, in their level of talent, and, like, it's a different experience, like, for you, like, walking on to college, and then their experience, how is it different? Who walked on? <laughs> <laughs> hey, even that got me. I said, what? Yeah, I, was like, I, saw, I saw Tanner Pink, I was like, what the hell? What? Uh, Y'all were nice. Don't, don't don't disrespect us, Miss Majors, Richard, okay? <laughs> no, I'm talking, Major? about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, I'm talking about, Hallie, like, you, know, uh, you don't know Jameer's backstory, so he, like he was a little guy. How much have, of this is going to be the truth? Didn't None of it. Already, already. <laughs> when he said little guy, he said little guy. So he went to he went to St. Joe's basketball camp and <laughs> was like trying to be like he was trying to be like a graduate assistant there, but he hadn't graduated yet because he was still like coming out. And then they offer him a scholarship, and then the rest is history. It's a beautiful story. You're such what a conference is St. Joe's in nowadays? Um, Atlantic Ten still. Was it eight, like I, I thought they were in like the mid Atlantic coastal region. <laughs> if you didn't go to Arizona, we don't exist on the planet. Exactly. No, 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 no. no, no. It's no. fucking amazing school. No. Even y'all bust, even y'all bust a game. Wait, wait, what call? What call? What, what conference are we in? What conference are we in? The Big Twelve. We're in the Big Twelve, right? So, mind you, we won. Well, we don't give a fuck about any other sport other than basketball because it's what we do. For we sure. won everything in the Pac-10. We won all the championships in the Pac-12. Now we about to go with Big Ten, Big Twelve. We about to go there and run shit. Okay, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Yes, we. What, what are you talking about? Kansas, Kansas State, Cincinnati. But, but you understand that Kansas won fifteen UCF. straight years or twenty straight years of the Big Twelve. That shit ain't happening no more with Arizona there. They're like just back. Even yeah. if they you win, guys, that, you come guys. on. Wait, wait. We're going to disrespect Arizona and say that they would be in a conference where they would let another school win for 15 fucking straight years? No. Are we talking so about much. regular season or are we talking about the tournament? 
No, we talking about we talking talk about just owning the conference. We in a new conference. We got to fucking establish. Our I didn't conference. know we all signed up for participation ribbons. I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't no, know I'm just, just talking saying. about. Hey, girl. We talking about conference. Jameer, you're amazing. Steps by Allie, step. you Delito plays Devry. Phoenix or what I is that? Or University that. of Phoenix, okay, uh, South Hampshire, New, the <laughs> University of Southampton, New Hampshire. The Channing Owls. came to Toledo one weekend for a tailgate, and he oh. was passed out by five p.m. Okay? It was eight thirty. Let me just say this: Chan <laughs> Channing, is not, Channing is a representative, but he is not our strongest. Representative it's altitude. It's like when you altitude. go to Aspen. There's altitude at Toledo. She didn't tell me about. It. I got altitude sickness. Jameer, Arizona is showing up. And we are going to dominate the Big Ten like we have dominated every conference. All yeah. that boring basketball bullshit no that the Kansas used to fucking dom. We're running that shit. Could your They're daughter go to Arizona, Jameer? Um, for softball? Is she nice? I mean, she's young. She's, she's young. Pretty good. Still I mean, she, she's good enough. Yeah, she's at that level. But I, I, I personally think she'll go somewhere down south. I don't think she'll go mm. west. It's, it was. I mean. We, 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 I, I took her around the University of South Florida's campus and she loved it just because like, I mean, they grew up in Orlando, which is an hour and 15 minutes away. So ultimately that's where they kind of want to go back to or so like that, that area. But, um, yeah. I don't know. She has a good list. Yeah. She has a good list of, of schools that, that, that are recruiting her now. So, uh, we'll see. That's so Have awesome. you paid off your student loans? <laughs> God, we want our guests to want to come back, Richard. No, we don't. No, we don't. Yeah, that's no, we, don't. we could have him sit in your place. <laughs> that's fine. Jameer, yeah. you're amazing. Thank you so much for yeah. stopping by. Is there anything we've missed? Do we need to talk about anything else? No. Do we need to discuss anything else? Well, let's let's stand. Let's just see him stand up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know, you know, he's the short. He's the, he's the shortest Listen. person on this podcast. You're the shortest person on this podcast. Jameer. I'm going to text you once a week. In between sets, <laughs> once a week. Dude, Jameer, give him Don't all the wrong there info. Lot, there are a lot of cameras Yo, around. Trading Joel Embiid to Orlando <laughs> for Mo Bamba. <laughs> Richard, there's a lot breaking of news. Sources, <laughs> sources, nah, see, this to me, he gave me some bullshit. Good. I'm like, my source was Jameer Nelson. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's another that edition would of suck. Really